Good morning, folks. We've got space weather with more expected today. We look at climate change on Neptune, a mystery with active galactic nuclei, and three terrific papers on core topics. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com, and we're looking at the last 24 hours on our star, and apart from normal coronal motion, we had a very quiet day. Coronal Hole's extension to the South Pole is now visible on its trailing edge, with the sunspots heading for the far side tonight. They now are officially at the limb. Coming to a solar wind, where yesterday we saw the start of the CME impact, it intensified once in the afternoon and then once more again this morning. This is just the CME impact here. You see how orange density and yellow plasma speed move together. Although globally we saw only a KP4 instability event, we did get up to KP6 on Karuna's local look for Europe. When the coronal hole stream impacts today, we'll see a density shock wave and then a dropout of density in favor of faster streams and geomagnetic storms are likely. We also have the Mercury Solar conjunction today adding to the IMF and kinetic alpha waves of these coronal holes. That's pushing the excess magnitude risk for the lithosphere. Let's come next to Neptune where major storms similar to Jupiter's red spot appear and vanish over time. The latest one was the largest ever seen, and this is their full timeline view of its appearance and disappearance a few years later. It will be interesting to see if the next one is even bigger. Up next, an interesting work by just one scientist. He examined nearly 300 exoplanet candidates, confirming nearly 150 of them, and 95 are brand new discoveries. We're moving on to active galactic nuclei. As we toggle optical and infrared with X-ray brightness and blue, Know that this study found the galactic centers to be outgrowing their galaxies. Now, while many of you would prefer a more electrical take of black hole physics, heck, many of you don't even like the name black hole. And alas, as active galactic nuclei are concerned, it's not the best description. They have cosmic jets, debris disks, and ion wind that is bright in the EM spectrum. But whatever these things are, they're finding that they violate the standard models of formation and growth as they are supposed to grow lockstep with their galaxies, not runaway El Gordo impressions while the rest of the galaxy stagnates. That's why this matters. Three top stories today. First, Gatherer shared this link yesterday to a wonderful corroboration of space weather and human health. It turns out that the geomagnetic effects of CMEs and coronal holes increases heart rate, while the radio flux, Schumann effects, and cosmic rays increase heart rate variability. Very different, although within the same cosmic health wheelhouse. Up next, we saw this work in one of the recent magnetic reversal videos, but here's the actual link to the paper with a full PDF available. Good place to get acquainted with the electromagnetic volcano trigger. Lastly, folks, we'll be going over this one in more detail on the website, but for now, just know that they discovered that the low-latitude flux tubes on the sun's side connecting Earth to sun are vastly smaller than the flux tubes connecting at high latitude. While smaller, they do carry a higher plasma density, indicating that the flow matches by latitude, but not the size of the pipe, so to speak, and therefore not the energetic dynamics either. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Observing the Frontier begins tonight with the core presentation starting tomorrow morning. Many of you are already here, and we are very excited to see you tonight. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.